Would you invest in this company? In this analysis video, we're going to see whether there's a good business behind the stock, and if so, is now the right time to buy? We're going to look at several metrics that will give us a better understanding of how much money the company is generating relative to its stock price, and that way we can get a clearer picture of the business. Growth. Investing in a growing company is the foremost rationale behind considering a stock investment. The premise is straightforward. When a company's earnings expand, its stock price tends to rise. If you hold shares of stock, you naturally want their value to appreciate. Beyond the influence of FOMO and hype, the key determinant of a stock's trajectory lies in its fundamentals. To assess growth, I focus on a single metric, earnings growth expressed as a percentage. What you're observing here is a forecasted growth comparison between our company, its primary competitor, and the long-term stock performance of the S&P 500 for the upcoming year and the next five years. Our objective is for our stock to outperform both benchmarks, succinctly put, when the black bar surpasses the gray and red bars. The closest competitor typically represents the company's most significant rival, often operating within the same industry or sector. We employ the S&P 500 as our primary benchmark throughout this analysis because it serves as the standard reference point and, let's face it, an alternative investment avenue should this venture not yield favorable results. Hence, if our company fails to outpace the benchmark in terms of growth, as well as other crucial metrics, it would be wiser to consider investing in an S&P 500 index ETF, or even exploring alternatives within the competitive landscape. Hype. Hype isn't a quantifiable measure, rather it serves as an indicator of expectations. We employ the price to earnings ratio, PE ratio, to assess the level of hype surrounding a stock. So why does hype matter? When an excessive number of investors express interest in our stock, they may rush to buy it, causing its price to surge. Consequently, the stock becomes more expensive relative to its earnings. These investors are either anticipating positive developments or merely following the crowd. Excessive hype is something we aim to avoid. In this following analysis, you will find the current P ratio in isolation and in comparison to its closest competitor and the components of the S&P 500 index. Two key aspects require your attention. Firstly, whether the P ratio exceeds both benchmarks, signaling potential overhype, and secondly, whether the standalone P ratio is exceptionally high. It's crucial to note that the acceptable P ratio varies by industry. Lastly, if there's no PE ratio available, which is often the case for unprofitable companies, this signifies that investors are significantly overhyping a stock that isn't generating profits. Efficiency. Now let's examine the company's operating efficiency. To gauge this, we analyze its return on assets, expressed as a percentage. ROA measures the extent to which our company can generate profits from its assets. For most businesses, ROA provides sufficient insight into their operational efficiency. However, in the case of bank stocks, we pivot to using return on equity. Regardless of the metric, our objective remains the same, achieving a favorable return. Displayed below are the current returns for our company, its competitor, and the S&P 500. Once again, our focus should be on the return figures themselves and how they compare to the other two benchmarks. This comparison will reveal whether our company effectively leverages its revenue-generated mechanisms. To simplify matters, let's ensure that the black bar surpasses both the gray and red bars in height. Book value. Next, let's examine our company's price-to-book ratio. Imagine our company being liquidated today. The resulting amount will represent the company's book value. The price-to-book ratio, in essence, quantifies how the market values our company in relation to its liquidation value. It's calculated by dividing the company's market cap by its book value. An optimal price-to-book ratio is typically below 1, signifying an exceptionally value proposition for investors. However, a ratio under 3 is generally considered favorable. Here you can observe our company's current price-to-book ratio, as well as that of our competitor and the companies comprising the S&P 500. Our goal is to maintain a low price-to-book ratio, ideally below the index's ratio. In this scenario, we aim for our black bar to be shorter than the gray and red bars, indicating a more attractive valuation. Dividend. Now let's examine the company's dividend-related metrics. In front of you, you'll find three key metrics, the current dividend yield, the buyback yield, and the payout ratio. Firstly, when it comes to the two metrics on the left, a higher yield is what we're aiming for. As a shareholder, your desire is to receive substantial returns while holding onto your stock. This essentially defines the essence of an investment. 
The buyback yield comes into play when the company repurchases its own shares. As a shareholder, this effectively means that you're increasing your stake in the company, and ideally, you'd want to maximize your ownership. Now, turning our attention to the right side, we have the payout ratio. Essentially, this represents a proportion of the company's earnings that are directed towards rewarding you as a shareholder. While dividends are certainly appealing, we don't want the entirety of the company's earnings to be funneled to shareholders. Reinvesting a portion of those earnings back into business can be instrumental in fueling further growth. Therefore, we need to strike a delicate balance. In terms of the payout ratio, we aim to keep it from becoming excessively high. The ideal mix involves a generous dividend and buyout yield, coupled with a modest percentage of the company's earnings being distributed to shareholders. Before we continue, consider joining my Patreon. It helps support this channel, but more importantly, you'll get access to every company I've analyzed so you can quickly compare between them. It's updated all the time. Head to patreon.com forward slash growth shares or click on the link in the description. Business. By now, you should have a clear sense of whether our business is performing well or poorly. If we were to consider buying this as a private company, we could confidently make a decision solely based on the company's business. To assess whether this is indeed a strong business, it would need to at least outperform the S&P 500. If it clearly does so, we can conclude that we are dealing with a business that is above average in its performance. What you see here is a brief summary of a company's performance compared to our competitor and our benchmark. However, I encourage you to revisit this analysis and determine whether the differences between our company and the benchmark are significant or minor. Nevertheless, your perspective on this company may differ. I've received comments from investors who assumed I held a short position because I gave it a negative assessment, and even from those who believe I had a financial incentive to boost the stock. Regardless of your personal biases, the numbers provide an objective assessment. Interpret them as you see fit. Fair Price so what does this all mean in terms of the stock's price? Here you'll find four distinct fair price assessments, one from analysts, another provided by Guru Focus, Morningstar's fair price evaluation, and lastly, my own fair price estimate. By taking an average of these four fair price estimates, we can pinpoint where the stock's price stands in relation to the ideal purchase price. The chart in the center of the screen illustrates the percentage by which the fair price exceeds the current market price. Essentially, the higher this percentage, the more undervalued the stock appears to be. Regarding the analyst price, it represents the average fair price consensus reached by a group of Wall Street analysts who closely monitor the stock. In my experience, these analysts tend to be more optimistic in their valuation compared to the other methods. Nevertheless, I've included these four distinct price points so that you can make an informed comparison and decide which one you place the most trust in. Performance now, what's the purpose of investing if the stock remains stagnant? While it's commendable for a company to possess a strong business model and an undervalued stock price, the dynamics of the stock market can introduce a completely different dimension. Though it's essential to remember that past performance doesn't guarantee future results, it's undeniable that historical trends exert some influence on what lies ahead. What you'll find here is a comparison of our stock's compounded annual growth returns against its industry and S&P 500 across various timelines. This provides an alternative perspective. If your primary concern revolves around the stock's historical performance and what you can reasonably anticipate in the future, you'll find your answer here. I'm presenting this information separately from my analysis, but I want to share it since some of you may have a keener interest in stock returns rather than delving into the company's fundamentals and its stock price. Final thoughts. In the past, I used to wrap up these videos by assigning a final grade, but that approach confines us to overly simplistic conclusions. From this analysis video, you can extract three key takeaways. One, examine the numbers to gauge the nature of the business backing the company. Two, absorb the insights and opinions, both from me and others regarding the fair price. And three, alternatively, you can disregard the first two points and focus on the stock's historical performance to guide your decision. This approach empowers you to make a more informed investment choice aligned with your preference and strategy. So remember to check out my Patreon. Your support is always appreciated. Invest wisely and as always, take care of your money.